Hi everyone, this is Amanda with Intigent, and today we are going to do a brief walkthrough of Project Online. A very high level, what is it about, what can it do kind of overview of the tool. So what you'll see here is my Project Online homepage. What you do see here is permission based. I am an administrator, so I have access to everything. If I was a project manager, I would be able to see less options. If I was a team member who can only log in to report status, I'll be able to see even less options. So what you do see here, both in tiles and on the left is determined by how your permission setup has been determined by your admins as part of the, the configuration. So I'm gonna click on two projects. And today we are going to focus just on these key components in our environment. This is a fully configured environment, which means there are a lot of extensions. We have our project ideas. We have some reporting down here. We have our strategy section, but today we're just going to go through quickly what the, the key pieces are, the core functionality of this tool. So my project center here will show me all of the projects that I have permissions to view. This is project information. It's not diving down into the task information just yet, but what I can see here is each row represents a unique project. So this project right here is my audit tracking solution. I can see the start and finish date, some data schedule points. I can see who the owner or project manager is. And if I keep scrolling to the right, I can see any other information I have decided to put into this view. Each place that you go into Project Online will give you a different ribbon. So I am in Project Center. I have a Projects ribbon. You can change what you see in Project Center based on some of the different fields that you have decided to configure specifically for your environment. So if you are interested in seeing your projects by business unit, you do need to configure a custom field to capture your different business unit values. Once you have done that, your project center can be group, shown to group those projects by business unit. So we have a yellow bar here or a gold banner that shows you that this is a grouping. These projects right here do not have a business unit assigned. Go ahead and collapse those. All of these projects belong to my business unit one. These three projects belong to business unit two and so on. So it's easy for me to say that these are the projects that business unit one is working on. I can see the names. You can, cast, you can configure some KPI indicators to show you here, cost elements, schedule elements, all of that can be shown here in a, in a quick dashboard feel and look. You can also have roll-ups of that project uh, portfolio show up here. So everything for business unit one has a total cost of about $7.4 million. The total benefits, which is a custom field for this environment, is about $18.8 .8 million. And all that is doing is summing up all of the numbers underneath of it. If I choose to group my projects in a different way, it will change that grouping for that new collection of projects. So for example, if I wanna group it by program, my asset management program has a total cost because it's a different group of projects, has a total cost of about $2.2 .2 million. I'm gonna click on to my content filtering design and implementation. And here is where I will really be able to dig into the details for one project specifically. Over on the left, I can see the name of my project here and I can click on it. If you do decide to have a workflow, a governance business process, that is kind of, is the overarching flow of how your project will, will, will follow, then you'll have your workflows flow stage status here, your project name, all of the different elements that your project will go through. We'll go through first create, select, plan. I am currently in manage and finally it'll go to a finished stage. Under that project's name, I see all of the different detail pages and each of these, of all three of these pertain only to this one particular project I've chosen. So if I click on business case, what I will find here are all of the fields, most of which have been configured specifically for this environment that pertain to my business case. As part of your deployment, we can configure the fields, any lookup values, any descriptions, 
organize the information here so that it makes sense to your project managers and to your end users. So in our business case here, we have some key project information. We have our program that it's going to belong to, which again, can tie back to Project Center and how you group your projects there. If I have any cost information to capture here, um, again, cost information over here, or I just want to be able to provide some more information such as expected benefit, problem statement, I can capture all of that right here. My project is checked out to me, so I do have the ability to make edits here. By default, only your project owners or project managers will be able to, to do that. You can always adjust your permissions if your organization has a different structure, but by default, only your project manager will be able to edit their project. If I make any changes, I'll click Save. I have not, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on my project status detail page, which is something that I always highly recommend. If you are asking your project managers to report status to you on a regular basis, keeping it as easy for them as possible, I am a project manager and every Friday I need to report status to my executives. I know that I can come to my project to this one specific detail page and everything on this page is going to be what I am being asked to provide status on. I don't have to go through all of the fields I've configured on a different page. I know that I'm going to be asked to update my project status, my any KPI indicators. You can add in multi-line text fields here to provide a a subjective narrative to what's going on into your project. Um, again, any fields you can put in here, you can pull out for reporting as well. So anything that you configure to be onto this page, you can use Excel, you can use Power BI to pull out the information and organize it in a format you're used to, a format you would like to get to, any way you want to organize, organize that information. And then finally, for this project, we have our schedule. Project Online allows you to view and edit your schedule in two different interfaces. The first one is the browser like you see here. You have your timeline, your task list, your Gantt chart. If I click anywhere in here, it will bring down my ribbon. So I can do some basic scheduling here. I can add tasks, I can add my resources, and here is where all of that, that core scheduling functionality that is Microsoft Project um, can be seen and updated. You can also connect, again, based on your permissions, project your project online environment to your project, Microsoft Project desktop. If you are in Microsoft Project Online, the minimum requirements, I believe, are you must have um, Project Professional 2016 or greater, but your IT or your PWA admin will be able to look at the backend settings and tell you what version you do need. Make my schedule changes here. In my resource name column, I see I have assigned all of the diff well, a lot of the different tasks to different resources. So any hours that I have allocated to Alex are going to appear over here on his task page or timesheet. Two ways that Project Online can gather that information from your resources or your team members so that you have actual hours that can be charged to your projects from there. This resource name column, along with the amount of work associated with each person is what will show up on your team members task page or timesheet. And finally, my project and each project in this environment will have a project site. This is a dedicated SharePoint site. If I click, you can see my navigation changes a little bit, but my project name still is up here. It'll give you an overview of your project. It also allows for team collaboration. You can work on documents together here. You can track your issues, risks, and deliverables in this site here. Everybody who has access to Project Online, again, based on your permission set, will have a certain level of permissions on your project site. For example, you have somebody who is the project owner of the project, they will become the owner of your project site. You have team members on your project, they will be granted a certain level of permissions into the environment to be able to have that team collaboration, update an issue that's assigned to you, work on this document so that you can get it out for customer release. 
All of that can be done here in your project site. I also have some elements here that are captured from the schedule directly. It tells me I have a lot of late tasks assigned to this project. This will show me that same timeline that you'll see at the top of your project schedule, any documents that you have in here. And again, you have your issue, risk, and deliverable register. All of these here, again, are available for reporting. So if I want to pull that out in the Power BI report, at a project level, I can say that my project belongs to the asset management program. I can have six, seven different projects that belong to that program. And each one has its own project site with a different set of issues and risks. From a reporting perspective, I can say, show me all of the issues with the asset management project. And it'll aggregate and pull out all of those issues and I can display it on a report. I can really roll up that information very easily um, just by putting them into each, each project site here. I'm gonna click onto my projects tab. You can click here on resource center. My resource center will show me a list of all of the enterprise resources that I have the ability to add to my projects. Enterprise resources for project online are so very important because they allow you to, as with almost everything for project online, be able to aggregate your data. I can look specifically at Aaron Painter or a generic resource or anybody in this list, and I can see where are they scheduled to work for the next six months, the next year, all that's pulled from the project schedules. I can see where are their assignments, where do they have availability, and I can use that to do some key project, uh, some key resource management. Who has availability to work on my projects coming up? Who doesn't? Who's overbooked? Um, what generic resources are coming in for our pipeline projects, and I need to make sure that I have somebody to do that work. The enterprise resource pool will give you that key resource management functionality. The task and timesheets provide your team members a way to be able to interact with their specific tasks and so the task page here will show you all of the tasks that are assigned to you. Again, and this is filtered for the individual logged in. So this here is my task page. I am on these three projects with tasks assigned to me. These are the tasks with each of them. I can see some of the data points. You can see some of them are overdue, but they still have some work on them. So I have them showing up on my task page. And I can be able, I'll be able to see all of the projects and tasks that I am personally assigned to. What's coming up for me in the next week, what's coming up for me in the next two weeks. And I can provide status back to my project managers straight from this interface. I don't have to um, sit through status meetings. I can provide all of my status to the project manager directly here it will route to those project managers for the appropriate approvals and then flow directly from there into the project schedule as actuals, either actual work or percent work completed. That will go into that once the project manager again does do that approval that that time is okay. And all of that then will route back into your projects to be updated once again, part of that monitor and control or execution stage, and also roll back into that resource availability and capacity. And it is really this interactive cycle between the project managers and the team members that makes Project Online so efficient and so powerful. So I will be doing some walkthroughs of the other parts of the tools, particularly some reporting. So if you have any questions or would you would like a customized demo, please reach out to us at info at Have a great day.